believed that we as people are multifaceted beings. There's a part of me that loves darkness. I feel like I can hide in the shadows and disappear like a mystery. I know it's cheesy, but this is my ultra ego. You want to start off by pulling your hair back and using a cleansing wipe to get rid of any excess makeup, dirt, and oil on your face. We want to start with a clean canvas. As the temperature gets colder, your skin's natural layer of moisture tends to dry out. You can get rid of any flaky, dry patches by using a microdermabrasion skin exfoliant. Warm it up in your hands and work the product onto your skin using a circular motion. And once you're done, just rinse it off. Your skin should look and feel polished. After you exfoliate, try to moisturize your skin or else it's going to feel really dry and stiff. You want to find a hydrating moisture mask to soothe your skin. And now that your face is hydrated, do the same on your lips. Coconut is a natural humectant, which means it will help draw moisture in and keep your lips supple longer. Coconut is life. All right, moving on, start taming those brows using a quality slanted tip tweezer. Try not to go overboard because you want your brows to stay full and natural looking. Allow for some time before going out because there might be redness from the plucking. Using a cream highlighter, apply this to the tops of your cheekbones. You want to do this under your base to give your skin a natural dewy look. If you want to look younger, a dewy complexion will help get you there. One of my top three favorite cushion compact is by Iope. This compact is called the six second compact. As they say, one is sold every six seconds. I wasn't paid to say that, true fact. The cushion applicator provides a light feathery coverage that won't cling to any imperfections. You don't really need to cover your entire face. Just spot treat your face until redness and blemishes are less noticeable. All right, now it's time to break out your favorite concealer. So I've been using this cushion concealer and at first I didn't think I would like it, but now I kind of use it for everything, concealing and highlighting. For this one, you can use it under your eyes as well as other dark spots on your face, such as blemishes and the areas around your nose and mouth. So just blend out your concealer until it looks natural. Now it's time to set your face by stippling on some pressed powder. I have right here this Doll 10 CC powder. It's pretty unique because it has green and pink beads to even out any imperfections and discolorations on the skin. What's nice about it is that it doesn't have a cakey finish. Before you buy any powder, read reviews or test it out to make sure it's not chalky. The powder should look and feel silky and refined. Find a dark cream eye color like a deep plum or burgundy and warm it up between your fingers. When I only have five minutes to do a smoky eye, this is my go-to method. Apply your dark cream shadow or eyeliner directly on your eyelid, lightly with your ring finger. If you want more precision, use your pinky finger. Keep dabbing to blend the shadow. The more you blend, the smokier and softer it'll look. So now, with your favorite pencil liner and using the back of your tweezer to hold the eyelid in place, create small strokes like this along your waterline. Personally, I think this is the easiest way to apply eyeliner. It's pretty much foolproof and provides a nice smoky effect. For more precision, you can take a stiff angled brush to create that wing. See, you'll be a master at the smoky eye in no time. Tight lining is when you apply liner into the rim of your upper and lower lash line. It feels kind of weird at first and your eyes might water, but you kind of get used to it. Oh, the things we do for beauty. Use a black felt tip eyeliner to punctuate the shape and intensity of the wing. Perfect. On my lazy days, which I have a lot of, I skip eyelash curling. However, it's useful for opening up your eyes. Unless you have naturally curled lashes, um, lucky. When applying mascara to your upper lashes, look down. When applying it to the bottom, look up or straight. That way, your body's natural reflex doesn't freak out when it sees this stick poking near your eye. Moving on to the brows, using a taupe eyebrow pencil, create feathery strokes to imitate little brow hairs. 
Using an angled eyeliner brush, add fullness to the brows by fluffing them out. When your boo is complaining that you're taking way too long to do your makeup, tell them next time, brows over bows. Mm-hmm. When both eyes have the perfect lines, use the wings as a guide to add more dimension to your crease. With a small eyeshadow brush and using the same cream eyeliner, intensify the depth of your eyes. Okay, let's take a break from the eyes and move on to the cheeks. Find a dark bronzer that's three to four shades darker than your skin color to carve out your cheekbones with a fluffy angled brush. To keep your contour as natural looking as possible, use a light hand and try not to get too close to your mouth. Add bronzer along your temples to accentuate your face. Alright, back to the eyes. Find a glittery eyeshadow and with your pinky because it's super tiny, pop this shimmery eyeshadow along the inner third of your eyelid, blending with your ring finger. This will help bring more magic to your eyes. By now, my lips are nice and soft thanks to the coconut balm and it's ready to be painted black. Before I apply any color, make sure there's not a product left on the lips. You want to remove any lingering concealer or foundation with a wipe, giving yourself a clean, smooth canvas to work with. Okay, now, the moment of truth. Break out the darkest lip color you have. Start with the biggest areas on your lips, around the center of the bottom and top lip. It's kind of like painting within the lines, so start with the largest areas first. From there, carefully apply the lipstick to the outline of your lips. And it's totally fine if it's not perfect, because we're gonna clean it up later. If you want more precision, use a small lip brush to adjust the lines for a cleaner shape. Very nice. Alright, moving on to hair. If you're not using argan oil in your hair, you're missing out. All the nutrients lost during coloring treatments and heat styling can be restored if you use oils like argan oil. The royal Egyptians were known to have beautiful silky hair thanks to oil. What you want to do is warm up the oil between your hands and finger comb through your hair for that silky finish. And now it's time to transform into my alter ego. There's a lot of beautiful temporary tattoos that you can find online or on Etsy. Find your favorite design that speaks to you. If you don't know exactly where an important part of the design is going to be placed, what I like to do is cut a notch in the paper before I apply. Here, I cut out a little notch in the middle of the neck application, so I know exactly where to center it. And once you have it on and it's nice and centered, pat lightly with a water-soaked paper towel or sponge. Try to make sure that it's thoroughly wet. If you want to check to see if it transferred, peel back one side slightly, and if the tattoo is revealed, you can safely peel the whole thing off. From here, just add more tattoos where you see fit. Tell your own story through these tattoos. The art and design should inspire you. Don't worry, they're only temporary, so you can experiment as many times as you want with zero commitment. Now, my alter ego look is complete. If you're gonna recreate your alter ego look, make sure to tag me in all your pictures so that I can see them and like them. Mwah. I love you dreamers, good luck.